So, just watched Arsene Wenger's press conference this morning and um, the state of journalism in this country is unbelievably shocking. Every single journalist I heard this morning put the question to him about Alexis Sanchez's contract situation, whether he's coming, whether he's going. Um, they also did the same to Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Not one of them mentioned Mesut Ozil, despite Mesut Ozil being in exactly the same position as the other two. Now, what I find quite amazing is the fact that you know Wenger can swat away these questions left, right, and centre. They're all pre pre planned. They're all pre vetted. Um, they're questions that he knows are coming, so he can prepare his answer. Um, obviously, you know, not being asked about Mesut Ozil when he's been back the longest out of the three, he's also come out with comments about he loves the club he he what he loves london he wants to stay at the club yet he's been back seven weeks and hasn't even got any closer to signing a new contract why aren't these journalists asking him what is going on with mesit ozil because in my opinion all three of them are taking the mick i think all three of them are seeing what the other one's doing or trying to do i think all three of them are trying to either get as much money out of the club as they can or angling for a move the only difference between Ozil and the other two is Ozil's trying to protect a brand. Obviously, he's got his clothing brand. He's he's obviously a worldwide superstar. You only got to go and look at his Twitter account to see that he's got seven million followers more than at Arsenal Football Club. Um, so he's trying to protect a brand, in my opinion, which is why he's coming out with the statements of "I love the club," etc., etc. Um, he doesn't love the club. None of them do. Um, let's have that right. They don't love the football club. They're employees of the football club they play for Arsenal but they don't love the club they love what the club's making them if that makes sense um, Mesut Ozil would never have started a clothing brand had he not have played for Real Madrid and Arsenal over the years let's have that right um, he's teeing himself up for a, a life after football whereas Alexis Sanchez and to a lesser degree Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain just want to play football they just want to play they want to play they want to win they want to win every trophy they can win Mesut Ozil in my opinion doesn't really care um, as long as he's happy in himself and, the, and he's making his brand bigger and better on a daily basis. Another thing that I found absolutely unbelievable was not one journalist in the, on the Arsenal media player that I heard for the whole, the whole of that press conference, not one of them asked if there's any players coming in. Now, we're currently 15 days away from the, start of the, um, the end of the transfer window. Um, we've signed Lacazette for 45, 50 million quid and we've signed Kalasanac. Add into that the fact that we've sold Chesney, we've spent about 35, 40 million pound net. Okay, now let's say we get rid of Gibbs, let's say we get rid of Chambers, who I'm going to come on to in a minute. Our net spend will be zero. Now we're a massive football club, massive football club, and to have a net spend currently of 35 million pound is unbelievable, especially when we finished fifth last season. Um, what do I know? I don't get paid £10 million a year, but I'll tell you something, what I would be doing if I was in Arsene Wenger's position is going out and buying a centre-back, which I've mentioned in a previous video, and I'd be strengthening the squad. Not necessarily the first 11, but the squad. Okay. Um, another question that wasn't asked was the Callum Chambers situation. Callum Chambers played quite a lot in pre-season. He looked half decent in pre-season. I'm not a massive admirer of Callum Chambers. I don't think he's up to the grade to, to be a top draw centre-back for Arsenal Football Club. I don't think he's good enough. But that's just my opinion. But not one journalist asked him why he's played in pre-season and then why he's not played since and he's been sat in a suit watching games from the stands. Um, are we selling him? Because if we're not selling him, why ain't he been playing? Um, we could have done with him the other night against Leicester when we had no centre-backs on the pitch and played two left-backs at centre-back and a, a right-back at left-back and a central midfielder at right-back. You know, all these questions need to be asked and none of these journalists seem to, to get to the nitty-gritty and ask these questions. Um, like I said before, they're, they're all vetted, all the questions are vetted beforehand. So, you know, I just don't get it. I think they're all sitting there. They don't want their privilege taken away of being able to sit in front of Arsene Wenger and ask him the questions that need to be asked. But 
Anyway, enough of that. On to the Stoke preview. Stoke City have just signed Jesse Rodriguez, the former Real Madrid player, currently at PSG. They've signed him on loan um, for the season. Um, I found out an interesting stat this morning as well. Stoke now currently have more Champions League winners in their squad than any other team in the Premier League. That, when you look at it, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, especially when you think that Chelsea have run it, won it in recent years as well. And, you know, it's, it's crazy. Unbelievable. But, yeah, we know what we're going to get with Stoke. We know that they're going to be in your face. We know they're going to get stuck in. They're going to be physical. They're going to be dirty. They're going to try every tactic in the book to stop us. <clears throat> um, but that being said, we did smash them there last season. Um, obviously a fantastic performance yes it was towards the end of the season and Stoke had literally nothing to play for but it's going to be a tough game and if we defend like we defended against Leicester on Friday night then we could be in trouble off a of set pieces so yeah I'm going to go into my 1-11 to now um, before I do that if you're new to the channel smash the subscribe button I'm about 50 odd subscribers away from 2000 I appreciate every single one that has subscribed so far let's get me up to that 2000 milestone um, and continue on for the rest of the season um, also smash the like button to pieces that always helps me on my way it lets me know the content is good and that you're enjoying it and obviously I want everyone to enjoy what I'm saying and what I'm doing obviously you know at the end of the day you guys are the ones that watch it so the like button always tells me that you like it and that I'm doing okay my 1 to 11 for the game um, I think he'll stick with a back three um, he said that Murta Saka and Mustafi are back in the squad um, so I don't think we'll see two left backs at centre back this week um, I'm going to go with Peter checking goal um, let's hope he sorts his form out because he had a mare against Leicester for their um, for their first goal for the equaliser came running out got caught under the ball and just flapped um, I think the back three I think he'll go with Murta Saka in the middle I think he'll go with Monreal as the left centre back and I think he'll go with Rob Holding um, although M uh, Mustafi is fit and back in contention I don't think he'll risk him he's not played at all since the Confederations Cup um, so yeah if we're winning the game he can obviously bring him on shore it up defensively towards the end of the game um, right wing back I think he'll go with Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain I hope he plays him there I think he's been fantastic playing there um, and looks a real threat going forward um, Hector Bellerin sorry mate but you ain't cut the grade recently and I think you've been a bit of a liability there so no not for me you're not playing mate um, left wing back hopefully he plays the tank hopefully Kalasinac gets a left wing back position we all know what the guy's capable of we're all in love with the guy already he's been fantastic since he joined the club um, scored in the community shield and then set up Welbeck for the uh, equaliser um, against Leicester the other day um, midfield um, I think Aaron Ramsey I think he'll start him alongside Granit Xhaka um, Aaron Ramsey nearly scored with his first touch when he came on against Leicester the other day and then he scored a fantastic goal we all know he loves Aaron Ramsey and we all know he's going to walk straight back into the team attacking midfield I think he'll go with Danny Welbeck pace power he tracks back just a shame he can't finish if he could finish he'd be dubbed world class um, and alongside him obviously he'll play uh, Mesut Ozil so then up top the main man Alexander Lacazette we're all in love with this guy as well the striker we've all been crying out for and hopefully he's going to do it against um, against Stoke this weekend so yeah let me know what you guys think stick your comments down below let me know your 1 to 11s let, let me know if you do anything differently and um, have a wonderful day. Later, peeps.